I was waiting to mount the control horn until after the paint. They suggested that. So these have been riveted in place now. You take a measurement from the hanging hinge to the inside control horn hinge. That has to be measured and you also want to measure this to your other hanging hinge. Make sure those are the same. Um, and then rivet it. There's a little bit of paint work that needs to be done in there. Um, this one actually needed to be pulled out, so that needs some paint, and I scratched it, so I had to sand that down and paint it. So it's good as going back in for another coat because there's a bunch of areas that need to be touched up on them. But the flap runs are, are done, other than that coat of paint, <clears throat> and they are ready to be hung. I went ahead and mounted the hinges on. I gave you guys that pointer about doing these um, back rivets, but they're all in, they're all done. Um, so we'll get that turtle deck knocked out tomorrow, get that done so we can put it up because um, it can't be on while we're folding the wings. And we are going to be folding the wings quite a bit to get to the fuel gauges and wiring and stuff like that. So only really one le thing left to do on the turtle deck. Uh, so I got the little strakes on there. And what we did with that is to cut them. They usually come way back to about here. Um, so when we're doing the hinge, we go ahead and just angle from the back edge of the wing to the hinge point. And then you don't have to put anything on the back side. So when it flips up, it doesn't interfere with anything. You can cut it and put the other half down here, um, but then it flutters. So there's nothing holding this outside edge here. So some guys are saying if you wanted to do that, you cut it straight across and you carry that hinge out into the uh, strake. Um, but this is actually what they say to do in the directions, just to cut it off. Um, there's really no need for anything back here. Um, I, think it, I think it looks pretty good that way. So I went ahead and put the cam locks on this side, and again, I'm going to replace these with the um, wing nut style on all those and across there. So I went ahead and did the cam locks all the way around. The turtle deck is now done completely. There is nothing left to do on that. Finish the turtle deck. All right. butt rib closeouts. It's this piece right here. It connects the butt rib to the door frame and closes that out so you don't have a gap right there. Um, some guys have used fabric to cover that. Um, these pieces were part of the prefab kit and there are no instructions on these. So um, I did cut out where the tab holds the butt rib and I'll put some sealant in those little um, gaps there. But you could lay it on top of it, but then it moves your door frame down the thickness of the aluminum. So I went and cut them out there and there. Um, there's a channel that goes around the door frame that's going to be glued in place. And then I drilled all and cleat code where the rivets are going to go. So it's all fit now. I'll pull it back off, clean up all the drill holes, um, deburr them, and then mix up the glue to, to glue the channel onto the door frame. Um, we will use micro balloons there because it's aluminum onto the powder coated steel. Same thing on this side. Um, then we'll get it all clamped in place. And once it's clamped, then I'll start doing the riveting. Um, there's no reason to wait for it to dry to rivet it. So I'll get it on there with the glue, clamped, then rivet all the, the outer edge. And uh, then we're done with that. It will dry overnight and we can remove the clamps tomorrow. Um, really important, make sure when you guys buy your clamps that they are color coordinated with the paint scheme on your plane. Can't stress that enough. Make sure your clamps match your paint job.
Okay, so end of the next day that I had here. Um, I could only do one side of the butt ribs just because they're they're a little uh, finicky as far as getting the seat all the way up into the door jam. So I used every clamp I had <laughs> to uh, do one side. So I didn't want to start into the other side until this one's dry. But this side is done. It's just drying. So it's all clamped in place. It's also all riveted to the butt rib. So that one will be done. Uh, then I can put the hinges on and then the doors are... Um, I'm not going to mount the doors yet, but then the doors can go on. So what I still need to do is run the fuel lines up and the sight gauges on the wing so I can start in on that tomorrow um, while I do the other side and let it dry. So um, this one's all uh, drilled, deburred. I sanded the inside of these slots with uh, 120 grit to get some grip there for the glue. And then I did the same thing on the uh, bar it's gonna glue to. I uh, did use micro balloons on the other side. So I'm gonna pull all those clamps tomorrow, make sure it everything's seated properly. And uh, then I'll go ahead and do this. I got the uh, antenna properly mounted. So it was more than just putting the screws in. Um, the plate that's mounted, you got a lot of people ask about the grounding plane. The plate that's welded to the frame back here is what I used as the grounding plane as per the instructions on the Rami antenna. But I did put this rubber seal, which I didn't have in yet. And then there's a backing plate on the back side that needed to be ground down just a little bit to clear the weld on the inside. Um, then those have been fastened and then the, the coaxial line is run to it and zip line in place up out of the baggage area. So. That was a little bit more time consuming than I thought it was going to be, but it, it didn't take very long. Antennas fastens, finished turtle deck. Um, soon to cross off these um, butt rib closeouts and OAT sensor will be done tomorrow. All right, so back at it here, uh, making some progress and um, some steps backwards as well. So the let's see that left side of the uh, butt rib closeout I've got in place. This is my outside air temperature probe. And it turns out this is a, well, it's not a GRT model. And so I've got that all wired up in here, mounted, and then I had to run a new wire to ground it. Everything's wired in, connected, but it doesn't work because it doesn't have the same signal that they're looking for. So it's throwing an erroneous temperature of minus 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So after talking to support on that, um, it looks like I have to replace that with the actual GRT probe. So kind of spent some time doing that today. Um, most of it was wiring in the ground wire. So that's done, it'll work for the other one. But then I'll have to cut that and redo the wiring at the actual unit when they send out the new one. Uh, triangle window, I can put a halfway done. I, we can we can mark that off halfway. So we, we can go. Only got the left side done. Okay, so. We warmed up to a brisk 38, uh, expecting that snow um, starting at, I think, 8 o'clock tonight, up to 20 inches. And I think it's all overblown. Everyone's making a big deal out of it. We'll see. Uh, hopefully that doesn't happen because we know from two years ago when I brought the kid home that we can't handle snow around here because it's always wet and all these uh, live oak trees we have around the house 
they can't support the weight, so it creates quite a mess. But anyway, back to the build. Uh, the triangle windows are done, guys. And I went with the smoked tent, which uh, had to locate some. I had a friend of a friend who had some extra from doing his. So I got that. That will match the turtle deck and the windshield. All smoked along with the, the doors as well. It's going to look so sweet. Just totally tented out with all the black trim and everything. It's going to be so cool. So triangle windows are done. The method I elected to use was the adhesive uh, automotive style tape to tape them in. Um, to be honest, I'm kind of skeptical that that's going to hold up long term. Uh, mostly from heat. It gets hot here and that will soften up a little bit. So we'll see how they hold up. Worst case scenario is you got to put some rivets in, which is what the alternative method is anyways. So I found the strongest tape I could find, double-sided uh, foam adhesive tape, is the Gorilla Glue. It's actually 30 pounds, so you could hang a 30 pound weight off of this tape. Um, it's twice as strong as anything else. Everything else is rated around 15. You know, call it a night, but you know, it was somewhat productive day for taking off in the middle of the day for, oh, three and a half hours to go finish up the install on the orange and black carbon cub that was in one of my previous videos. I'll put a link up here on the uh, Behringer 10 inch install along with the Shock Monster gear. Um, awesome plane, uh, just came out beautiful. So uh, we went and finished that, did the, we bled the brakes on that. So I had all the stuff out. So when I got back, I went ahead and just did the brakes on this too. Get it all done. And bleeding the brakes on the Behringer, I didn't film it, but it's super easy. You've got a really large uh, nipple down here. That's right, it said nipple. It's much bigger than you see on a Grove wheel. It's actually the same size as the brake line. So when you pump that fluid through, you're clearing the whole brake line of air in one run. And then you just pop the caps off the reservoirs here, open the valve up on the bottom with a pressure tank, and let it filter through and you can see the fluid come in. And with the clear brake lines that I ran on the backside here, you can actually see the bubbles coming out. Pump them a couple times, stop, you know, stop the flow, pump them a couple times, only fill it about a quarter full, pump it, then fill it about a half full, see if you get any more air, pump it again, and then fill it up to about a quarter inch from the top, put the lid on, you're done. So do the left side, then you do the right side, and you're done. So honestly, bleeding the brakes took about 15 minutes. And you guys are probably wondering what I use for a pressure tank. Uh, we used to actually sell this at Behringer, but we don't anymore. But it's a, uh, it's a power bleeder from Moto Motive Products. You pump the handle and it builds up pressure. And it'd be nice to have a valve on this, but you just pop this line onto that um, bleed nipple on the caliper. And then you just crack that nipple uh, with a 7 16th wrench, I believe, and it flows right in. So that's bleeding the brakes. forgot to film this but I went ahead and took the backing plates for the fuel sight gauge and I wrapped them with white vinyl so I had to decide between white doing carbon fiber black what would be the best backdrop for the uh, sight gauges so I had to go ahead with white and that's what that is mostly because when I go to label it the labeling will stand out better with a white backdrop I could have reversed that done it with the carbon or the black and use white lettering like the panel um, but I think the white in this case when you look up there it'll stand out real good to see the sight gauge with the black carbon fiber all the way around the opening so that's why I went with the white so we'll go get those sight gauges installed put those on and then later on when we do the fill test we'll fill with five gallons per side we'll isolate each side and then we'll mark off as we go up with the gallons and uh, create both a tail low position on the back and a flying attitude position in the front so that we know how much fuel we have in both situations. All 
Okay, so that side came out looking great. And what I did when I pulled those inside to cover them with the vinyl, I looked at which side I marked on, and I figured that would be the outside. Well, 50-50, right? <laughs> uh, I covered the wrong side of these with vinyl. So I'm gonna go back inside and recover those um, because I did them wrong. So gotta show the errors along with the success. Snow situations escalated just a bit. It's coming down pretty good. Not sticking yet, but it is coming down. I give it probably another 40 minutes and we're gonna start having some accumulation. All right, so got the other side done after uh, having to redo the vinyl on it. There you go. Got that side and we got this side. So I do like the white. I'm gonna stick with that. Came out good. So let's go cross that off the board. Sight gauges. Let's do push the talk switches. We'll get those done. Um, I do want to put some of those douche connectors that I used for all the lighting um, at the base of the control sticks so that they can be removed. It's not really that important on the pilot side because that one's not gonna come out. For the co-pilot side, I found, especially with young kids, that I like to remove the stick completely. Um, or if you're gonna have, let's say, a small dog or whatever. I don't plan on having a dog in my plane, but um, that way you can remove the stick, unplug the PT, the push to talk switch, and the whole stick comes out. And uh, it's a little bit safer for youngsters in there with the stick gun. Push the talk buttons are in, the grips are installed. I drilled the hole to mount permanently mount the control sticks in. And what I did there is I, I shortened the bottom end just a little bit to give me better clearance of the grip to the panel and also to lower the grip down into my lap a little bit better. The sticks, when they come from the factory, you don't have to use that length, you can shorten them to your liking as long as when you pull full back, it clears the seat and the bar there. Um, the cushion has a recess in it on mine, so that will be fine at full aft. I won't hit anything. So that gives me a little bit better clearance up top. Those are all uninstalled. I didn't connect the wires on the co-pilot side just yet because I don't have a two-pin Deutsch connector. Um, so I'm going to order one of those, then I'll put that in. The other side has a three-pin. I did have one of those. So two wires are currently running up the stick. But to that pin, I've got a third wire, and that's for an autopilot disconnect button. So I still plan on at some point redesigning or doing another design for the top of the of these uh, grips that has a trim switch um, and an optional switch and a push to talk switch, so that you can have the autopilot disconnect and also a trim switch. Um, some of you guys are waiting on that. I won't get to it till after I'm done with this build and flight testing. So don't hold your breath on that. Um, but I do have the provisions for that wire um, for the autopilot disconnect. And then also when we go to do the trim, we'll just tap into the trim wires, which are right here. So um, I'm gonna connect this real quick in here with a zip tie, put some wire bundle wrap around that to clean that up. And then we're gonna cross that off the board. I think I got everything on my list to date done. So the last thing was this GPS antenna mount. So I created a little piece underneath that actually Velcros in place. 
then the antennas mounted to it and then I went ahead and put the suede on it um, I could have brought it up flush but um, it would have just added weight to put the filler in there so it's just velcroed in covers that gap real good has the antenna sit down a little bit so I think that worked out pretty nice well <clears throat> somewhat fitting I wish I was kind of fishing finishing up the uh, build today because you guys look back to the very first episode this is what it looked like the day after I brought the kit home so we got another snow it wasn't as bad we got five inches um, it did immediately knock the power out I think we had about accumulation of a sixteenth of an inch and the power went out came back on and then went out it's been out since last night so generators running um, so filming today is gonna be I'll just do time-lapse I don't want to do a whole lot of uh, voice work in there because it's kind of loud the generators right outside the garage door so uh, I am you know we do have the generator so I am able to get some work done so uh, get back at it uh, one of the things I didn't have on the board that I noticed that I forgot to put on there is uh, reconnecting the radiator lines after removing the radiator position um, so I'm gonna get after that first thing this morning uh, I gotta get as much as I can before done before about 2:30. And I got to go down and get my second COVID vaccine shot. Um, and uh, hopefully I don't feel like crap for two days, like they say a lot of people have been after the second dose. So uh, anyway, we'll get that stuff done today, get the shot, and uh, get back to work. All right, guys, so surprisingly, some things taken off a long time to do. Um, I got these cool American flags that we're going to go on the plane at some point. And they match pretty closely to the yellow stripe on the wing. So I went to make the end numbers and I had vinyl and yellow to do those, but it didn't match. It's a, more of a cub yellow. So I actually tracked down from the supplier of the flags the type of vinyl because the color matched so well. Turns out they had it locally here at Michael's. So I went ahead and cut the three inch end number out of the same stuff. So that is on both sides of the tail now. Take you around the other side. See the other one. The flags are um, uh, mirror images. So it's like you're looking at the flag on a flagpole. So this one kind of looks backwards, but if you imagine if the flag was flying from the pole, that's the way it would look. So it's a little more yellow accent. You know, it kind of matches those stripes on the wing. Just a little subtle bit of yellow. And then I'll probably end up doing the big number four on the tail for the races out of the same stuff. So anyway, end numbers are on. Along with that, we uh, went ahead and cut the passenger warning labels. So that one was a bit of a chore to get that small text that small but that has to be displayed and then the last one which I tried both out of yellow and white is the experimental uh, end up choosing the white with the carbon fiber backdrop so we are now compliant with all the labeling on the uh, aircraft as far as the inspection and the FAA is concerned so the last thing I have to do to cross that off is um, complete the data tag, which I do have, and that will be riveted to one of the uh, cowling aluminum pieces at the tail. Um, I need to do a, you have to engrave that, and I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna put on it yet. So I'm gonna hold off on that until I absolutely have to do it. So as far as the labeling goes, um, I would like to go ahead and cross that off. Hey right, guys, getting going this morning on the cowling. Put it outside so I can keep the dust down here in the uh, shop to a minimum. Um, we're going on the sanding on that. I'll throw the time lapse on it, but it's just going to be pretty monotonous sanding. Um, get that done uh, to the point where I'm happy with the body work. And we're going to go ahead and make the cut to divide the top from the bottom on the front piece. So let's get to work. I'm 
marked off the division lines and again cut up and left about an eighth to a quarter inch ticks so that it's still connected and now I'm going to go inside and cut the carbon fiber in three inch strips uh, to use as the uh, the backing layer and I think I did three or four layers last time to get that I think three was what did it um, so I'll do the same thing and I'll pack and tape off the upper portion of the cow so it only sticks to the bottom side and then the top piece will be able to come off when I cut those ticks we'll trim the overlap put in the cam lock plates and uh, get this all finished up all right guys so I have been struck with the second shot reaction. Um, nothing real severe, just I'm really cold, can't seem to get warm. And uh, working out in the cold garage isn't helping that. Uh, I also got a faint headache and really achy body and, and very tired. They said it can be more severe of a reaction on your second dose. And uh, that's what I'm having right now. So they say it only lasts about 24 hours. Um, the FAA has actually mandated that we can't fly for 48 hours after getting one of these vaccination shots. So um, it actually gave me part of the day off tomorrow because of that. So um, I'm going to recuperate a little bit here, try to get warmed up. And uh, if, if I start feeling a little better, I'll get back out there and back to work. But right now I'm just going uh, to watch some YouTube. <music> So the cowling backing pieces are in and drying. I'll come around the other side and show you. So three layers of carbon down with the peel ply on top. It's as important to get your peel ply layer down tight, smooth, and no wrinkles as it is to get the carbon down the same way. I want to make sure it cures all the way around the corners and you don't get any wrinkles in there or it will accumulate resin. So that part's done. Um, I did use a fast drying resin, so it flashed already. You can see what happened to my mixer bucket. Apparently it's not resin proof. It totally blew out the, uh, <laughs> the container. It's totally a mess, so. All right guys, so went ahead and pulled the peel ply off the carbon cowling. Went ahead and cut those nicks and pulled two pieces apart. So here's your top piece. And again, what I did to make it not stick is I laid a piece of duct tape and then a piece of packing tape down over the top of that. And it makes a really good uh, barrier. And then, what you end up with is a nice clear step to put the backing plates for the cam locks on. So I'm going to cut this to one inch. So all the excess will be cut off. And then uh, we'll start placing those cam locks. So, you know, pretty good. The key on the cam lock placement, don't want any on the, where the spinner backing plate's gonna be. So up front, we're gonna need to put one right in this area on either side. And then on the sides, you wanna come up pretty close to the turn so that it holds that turn down tight. But because it was laid up with the other piece, it will fit the other piece, the contour, perfectly. That's why I, I do it that way. It came out real nice, so the only thing left to uh, modify is the bottom scoop to match the radiator. Um, I won't get to that until probably next week sometime, so I've got it taped off already. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm taking the kick panels for the console 
And I'm putting a little bit of Bondo on the bottom. So these sit in there like this. And the floor's got just a little bit of a bow to it. And these don't sit flush. The aluminum ones have never sit flush. And if we try to screw them down, it actually, it kind of distorts the aluminum. And it's never, they don't really fit quite right. So I'm adding a little curvature to the bottom. I'm gonna sand this out and get it all uh, finished off nice. And then I'll use this uh, for the template. Um, I've got some wood to make a mold out of it. And then we're gonna lay three layers of carbon up over the top of this. So I'll get the body work done. Then I need to paint it or wax it and then paint it with a PVA um, so that the carbon will release. And uh, once that's dry, we can go ahead and lay the carbon. I got all the carbon cut and ready to uh, put the resin in and lay down. I just have to finish these up. So I've got everything ready to do these uh, kick panels for the console. So I'm going to cut some batting to match the uh, peel ply. Uh, that's going to go inside the bag. And then uh, I am doing the vacuum bags this time instead of the vacuum pump uh, because I can't stay here and, and monitor the vacuum pump. And uh, because it's a Harbor Freight one, it tends to smoke off some oil and I don't want it to run out of oil while I'm at work. So I'm just going to use the vacuum bags. It should work fine on this. Um, it does apply plenty of pressure. So I'll do that and then uh, we'll get these laid up here. So I'll cut this batting, mix up the resin and uh, do the layup, peel ply down, batting on top, slip it in the bag, put on vacuum, call it a day, go to work. Kick panels are bagged, vacuumed. Um, honestly, I kind of wish I'd done it with the actual vacuum pump. These bags, I really need to get a tight edge all the way around. And I just don't know if it's giving me enough pressure around those edges in an even way. Um, I think next time I would do the mold differently and carry it much higher up so that that edge carries down about here. And then I'm not you know, then you'd have a bigger surface for it to suck down to. Um, so if they don't turn out, it wasn't that much carbon. Um, so I can do it again if I need to, but hopefully these will be all right. All right guys, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Uh, working our way through the list on the uh, whiteboard. Uh, I think the plan is to probably do the first flight probably in March. Um, it's end of very end of January, so it gives me about a month to wrap everything up um, and get the inspection schedule. We also have some family uh, obligations this month as well. So, or next month in February. So we'll see how it all goes, but that's the plan for those that are wondering. I'm very close. Um, I've got a little bit more paint to do, like I said, and uh, just all these things to tidy up. But it's getting very close. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I can't wait to get back in the air and join these guys that have been out having fun all winter. So uh, thanks for watching. 
hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the like button, and always leave a comment if you have something to say. Now, we'll see you on the next video.